Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium and today we're going to be taking a look at creating cumulus clouds in Blender. I believe this is the last tutorial I will make in this cloud creation series. And uh, with this video and the other tutorials in this series, you should be able to create any sky you can imagine. And hopefully do away with images as sky backgrounds. I had a lot of failed attempts before I came to these results. And uh, along the way, I picked up quite a few secrets to allow you to get your clouds to look realistic. And in this tutorial, I will be sharing those with you. So all that being said, let's jump right in and get started. I'm going to open up a new scene in Blender. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a small 3D view at the bottom to see my rendered uh, preview in. Next, I'm going to add a plane, Shift-A mesh plane. Grab the vertices along the X axis and extrude those and drag them out one at a time. Next I'll grab the vertices, some of the vertices along the Y axis and extrude those out. Try to imagine which direction the wind is coming from and whichever direction that is, put the biggest part of the cloud facing away from the wind. Next I'll extrude this up and uh, begin grabbing vertices on top of the cloud. I'll bring these up to make the cloud uh, taller and um, just to give it some volume. Next I'm going to hit C to get circle select and select the bottom part of the cloud. I'll extrude this down. Then I'll hit Alt to grab a loop of faces around the bottom of the cloud. Extrude those and scale them out and then drag them down just a bit. Then I'm going to go into object mode and add a subdivision surface. Um, if your cloud doesn't look like a cloud a little bit at this point, then you should probably start over. I highly recommend copying reference directly and just uh, going with that at first, as uh, clouds can be pretty hard to get right. Next, I'll add a displacement modifier and hit new texture. I'm going to go ahead and name this displacement main. Set the texture coordinates to global. This is pretty important. Then I'm going to set the strength to a negative value. I'll go with negative 1 for now. And uh, then go to the texture settings. I'll set the texture to Veroni. And uh, then I'll go ahead and turn the noise size up quite a bit. I'm going to go with 2.5 at the moment. Then I'm going to hit distance squared under the distance metric instead of uh, actual distance. Next, I'll turn the strength down a bit or uh, up depending on how you think of it. Then I'll turn the subdivision surface up to 2 so that we can see our noise a bit better and uh, that will allow me to see that I need to turn the strength of the noise down. And uh, once you've got that right, turn the subdivision surface back down to 1 and uh, you should have your base cloud. When you move it around, the noise changes uh, or rather the noise stays the same and the object position changes. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in another subdivision surface, set this one to 1 for the rendered view and the viewport. Then I'll add another displacement and uh, set this to Veroni as well. I'll turn the noise size down quite a bit and the strength also down quite a bit. I'll go with negative 0.4. Then I'll also set its mapping to global. I'll name this displacement bubbles. 001. Then I'll add another displacement. This one I'm going to call bulge and uh, if I was you I would not add this because I end up deleting it later. A bulge displacement can be pretty powerful uh, which I've used in some of my other videos in the past um, but for this situation we're not going to be using it. If you need the bulge displacement I highly recommend using it. You do not need to follow my settings exactly. Next I'll add in a simple deform. I'm going to go ahead and set it to taper instead of twist. I'll add in an empty and drag it off to the left a bit then I'll set the axis origin for our simple deform modifier to this empty. Um, if you pull it over, it'll sort of uh, shear your cloud out to the side and you want to shear the cloud away from the wind um, or taper it away from the wind. I'll turn its factor down quite a bit. You don't want this effect to be terribly strong. Um, it'll just help sort of warp your cloud out of shape and give it some more realism. 
Now I'm going to add another subdivision surface, set it to 1 again for the viewport and for the render, and another displacement. I'll collapse the subdivision surface and hit new texture for the displacement. This one is going to again be distance squared and uh, this time I'm going to turn up its intensity a little bit on the coloring and then turn its noise down again. I'll set its strength to a negative value yet again. Now I'm going to name this displacement Bubbles002 and uh, so I continued the last step adding a couple more subdivision surfaces and displacements until I got something like this. Now there's one more thing that we need to do. I'm going to turn off my subdivision surfaces and uh, leave most of the modifiers on. Then I'm going to hit control tab to go into weight paint mode and uh, I'm going to paint a weight map. Back into object mode um, I see that our mesh is a little low resolution so what I'm going to do is just apply the top subdivision surface modifier to give us a little more resolution to paint with. Go back into weight paint here what I'm going to try to do is paint the bottom of the major bubbles. As I said earlier, I delete the bulge modifier here and uh, then begin painting. Almost the entire bottom of the cloud is going to be weighted. Um, then uh, basically what you want to do is paint the underside of the major bubbles. All right, so the last thing that you're going to need to do is invert this map so that everything is weighted except for the areas that we painted. And uh, that looks pretty good. Once you've done that, you can turn your brush to zero weight and uh, continue refining the map if you want to. I'm going to call it good and go back into object mode. Now I'm going to go to bubble 003, which I created off recording, and uh, apply the vertex group. Then I'm going to also go to bubbles 004 and apply the vertex group. Those bubble maps are basically just the same thing we've already done. It's uh, adding another Veroni texture and turning it down a little bit. Next we're going to change some settings, set some settings. I'm going to go to the world and make it a bluish color for the background and uh, turn its brightness up a little bit. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go under the render settings and under light paths. Here I'm going to set the transparency max to 1024 and I'm going to set the volume bounces to 4 at the moment. I'm going to set the resolution to 80% of 1920 by 1080. Next we're going to go back to the 3D viewport and uh, add in a lamp, sun lamp. I'll just move this off to the side a bit and uh, rotate it. I'll rotate this around so that it's sort of coming from the same direction the wind is that I'm imagining. And uh, now I'm going to pick a nice view and hit Control Alt Numpad 0 to place the camera at my view. And uh, now I'm going to hit Shift Z in the bottom viewport that we opened up at the beginning of the tutorial. I'm going to turn the strength of the sun up and tweak its rotation a little bit. Next I'm going to Shift A, add in a plane and uh, scale this up quite a bit. I'm going to move it down on the Z axis so that it's out of view of the camera and then I'm going to add a new material. What this is going to be doing is adding a shadow to the bottom of the cloud so it's not the same color as the rest of the cloud. Um, I'm just going to make it bluish and pretty dark uh, so that it shades the bottom of the cloud. I'm going to go to material and hit new material. I'm going to delete the diffuse shader and of course add in a volume scatter shader. Plug this into the volume input and uh, I'll turn its strength up to 5 and uh, when you render that out, you will get something that looks like this, almost cartoonish. Next, I'm going to go and add in a gradient texture. I'll add in a converter color ramp and plug the gradient texture into the color ramp. Then I'll plug the color ramp into the density of the volume scatter and add a math node in between those two. Set it to multiply and turn its value to 8. Next, I'll add in a geometry node and plug the position into the gradient texture. I'll go vector mapping node and set its rotation to 90 degrees on all axes. 
and uh, that's pretty good it's a basic cloud texture and uh, if you move the cloud up the position of the gradient will not change at all because it's plugged into the position of the geometry and uh, it stays put while the cloud geometry moves. I'll tweak the color ramp a little bit on the cloud then I'm going to go and add in a texture noise texture this is going to be to break up the um, perfect cutoff point at the bottom of the cloud. I'm going to add a color mix RGB. Plug this in between the color ramp and the multiply. I'll set the mix RGB to overlay and plug the noise texture in. Set its vac to 1 and add in a second color ramp. Put this in between the noise texture and the mix RGB. I'll crank the color ramps values up quite a bit and plug the geometry node into the noise texture. I'll set the scale down uh, to 0.5 maybe and then continue to turn the contrast up on this with the color ramp. This will break up the bottom of your cloud a bit so that if you're viewing it straight on it doesn't look like a perfectly flat cutoff. With most cloud scenes where you're looking up at the cloud or down on it, this does not really matter, so you can skip this if you're looking up at the cloud. Next I'm going to tweak my view a little bit to uh, look up at the cloud more. And uh, I'm going to scale the plane up a bit. I'm going to move it up a bit closer to the cloud to make the bottom of the cloud darker. I'll turn the world background's brightness up a bit So I'm going to go back to the node editor and select the cloud. I'll hit M on the overlay node and uh, just to mute that because I don't think we need it for this scene. And then I'll go to the UV image editor and do another render. And uh, this is what we get from that render. It looks pretty good, but it could use some help. So if I was you, I would turn up the density of the cloud and give the surface some more detail. Just remember that the higher the density of your cloud, the more surface detail and resolution you're going to have to use. As you may have noticed, there's a lot of artifacts in the raw render of the clouds. Unfortunately, that's just something you're going to have to deal with. In order to get good clouds, you're going to have to kind of ignore those artifacts and paint them out in some other software. If you want to get rid of them, just make sure your mesh is not intersecting anywhere. Anyways, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you for watching. This is Joel Adams with Iridesium. Bye.